On the 2nd of February, we're celebrating the World Wetlands Day. So join us to learn more about wetlands, what they are and how they have a key role in our planet. Wetlands are areas or patches that are at least periodically underwater and in which the substrate is humid and undrained. There are various types of wetlands. Marshes, very common around the world, especially in estuaries and river deltas. They are the wetlands that are almost permanently underwater and show this typical vegetation. Swamps are other type of wetlands, known for their Hollywood appearance on Shrek. These apparently stagnant waters are vibrating and exciting ecosystems. Other very distinct types of wetlands are the bogs. In bogs, the main water source is precipitation, which leads to an environment poor in nutrients, meaning the vegetation is almost 100% moss. The last type of wetlands are the fens. Fens appear in areas where old wetland vegetation isn't fully decomposed, giving way for an undrained and high in nutrient soils. When talking about wetlands, there's a subcategory of tidal marshes that are particularly important. They're called mangroves. Mangroves or mangrove forests appear in coastal wetlands and in river basins, and they develop a major role in the safety of the communities that base themselves around these wetlands. Let's for example take a look at the Atlantic coast of Central Africa, where the people from Senegal, Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, etc. are protected from tropical sea storms by the mangroves, the same mangroves that offer them a job, as they are a great place to catch seafood later sell at the local markets. But wetlands aren't just natural barriers or areas with unmeasurable economical value. Wetlands are a gift from our planet when it comes to fighting climate change and CO2 emissions, as the roots of the plants found at wetlands absorb around 20 to 30 percent of the carbon present on Earth, despite only making up for 5 to 8 percent of the planet's surface. So now that you know how important they are, let's talk about how to save and restore them. Firstly, something important, humans have the ability to create wetlands through artificial lakes or even through man-made water basins, but that should not be the priority. The priority should be to save the wetlands that we already have all over the world. To save and restore our current wetlands, all we need are four easy steps. First, we must get rid of alien invasive species that take over the wetlands by fast reproductive methods combined with their low need for nutrients and resilience to unfavorable circumstances. Sometimes this step is enough to save a wetland area. Secondly, we must replace the old sand and old soil for new and clean sand or soil filled with nutrients. These nutrients are essential to the next step, seeding and planting of the correct species of plants. This step has to be done correctly to avoid what caused the first step to happen again. Always plant endemic species. Last but not least, don't disregard maintenance work on protected wetlands and avoid contamination at all costs as that is often enough to destroy an entire ecosystem by itself. When talking about the wetlands, there's a country that deserves to be mentioned. Bangladesh. Bangladesh is a country situated in South Asia, almost totally surrounded by India. In Bangladesh, people live off the country's wetlands. In fact, two-thirds of its residents depend on wetlands for their livelihood. Bangladesh is an interesting country, geographically speaking, with an area just slightly bigger than Greece. Its population is of 164 million people, 16.4 times the 10 million people that live in Greek soil. But Bangladesh is facing a terrifying situation. With the rising sea levels and climate change destroying its wetlands, Bangladeshi people are in risk not only of losing their main source of income, but also their lands, as the country is in a high risk of sinking. But wetlands are not only at risk in the other side of the planet. Even here in Greece, multiple wetlands are under risk of disappearing, and some are even being monitored and protected by competent entities, making up for national parks. Here are the 10 Ramsar wetland reserves in Greece and where to find them. The delta of the river Evros, which can be found near to Alexandropoli by the border with Turkey. The national park of Nestos Delta, located near to Kavala, on the mainland directly in front of the island of Tassos. The lakes Vistonida, Porto, Lagos Ismarida, situated by the coast in between Xanthi and Komotini. The lakes Volvi, and Koronia on the mainland that leads way to Hakidiki. 
the Kerkini Lake National Park, a mere 50 kilometers away from Ceres, the Lake Mikri Prespa at the Prespa National Park on the border with Albania and Northern Macedonia, the Ambracian Gulf on the Amvrakikos Wetlands National Park in Preveza, the lagoons of Mesolonghi and the lagoons of Kotici, two different sites located on opposite margins just outside the Gulf of Patras. The delta of Achios Ludias Aliakmon National Park, located in Thessaloniki, just a couple of kilometers to the west of the city. So let's do something before it's too late. Let's save our planet. And wetlands are a great place to start.